Welcome back. In this lecture, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be explaining the blockchain. Now, we're not going to be able to explain the blockchain in only one lecture because we actually need to develop on it by looking at miners and their role in the blockchain before we can actually finish up explaining it completely. So what is the blockchain? The blockchain is basically, and the definition is, a digital ledger. So it's a ledger that, that we've been talking about, right? Uh, where there's transactions in Bitcoin or in other cryptocurrencies that are recorded in chronological order and publicly. So you saw the issue we had earlier when we were looking at the ledger and saying, well, you know what, since this is a distributed ledger and everybody has access to it, well, what if some people have different versions at the same time, what happens? Well, to solve this issue, what we do is create a blockchain. And each block is basically just a ledger that's completely filled up where we have consensus that this is the last ledger and this last block and from where we can say, okay, well, right now, this is the version of the truth that we have now. This is how much money everybody has. Let's start adding up the rest of the transaction in a new ledger and add this block to the blockchain and keep going that way. And this way, we solve this issue of having the truth at any time, uh, the consensus of the truth at any time, right? So example, in the recent... Uh, example we had where we had a ledger here right and that ledger had you know all these transactions where uh, i mo send 20 dollars to queenie and mo send uh you know 20 dollars to cam uh, and then queenie sent some money to whatever and then we have all these transactions here this is the ledger now as we've said since this is a distributed ledger and everybody excuse my, my person here, but everybody has access to this ledger at any time, right? And everybody sees it. And there is this issue that at some point, maybe some people ha see different ledgers at the same time. What we need to do is have a system for having a consensus. And this system is the blockchain. What the blockchain says does is it says, let's everybody who's on this system in this network listen listen on the network for all the transactions that happen and every time a transaction happens like let's say mo sends omid 20 dollars this transaction is broadcasted and then the people who are listening to this can take the transaction apply the validation function to make sure that it is a correct transaction it's true put it in to this block, right? We can call this block one. And once this block is completely filled and there's not enough space to add any more transaction to it, say, okay, this block is filled. Let's now create a new block. And then all new transactions that happen, right? If somebody sends, uh, Omid sends Queenie, Five dollars, it gets broadcasted. They start adding this in block number two, right? And they would put Umid sent Queenie five dollars. And in this way, we have a chronological order of where the truth is right now. So if anybody wants to, you know, come in and see how much money he has, or if somebody else can pay him money, well, all he has to do is look at the most recent block because the most recent block includes how much Omid has based on his transactions here and his transactions here and his transactions in all the previous blocks. So we have the most recent copy of the truth at any time. Now, there is still issues in this situation, right? Because yes, we understand that we have digital signatures and all of that, that you know can give us confidence that whatever we see here is truth. But who creates these blocks? Who says that this block is correct? Because if we have a bad actor, and let's say this guy, his name is Bob, and he's, he's evil, right? And he wants to lie. He wants to put a fake transaction here that Mo sent him $100, all his money, uh, in this block and say this is the truth and input it and then start a new block and lie about it. Well, it doesn't work. Why? Because the blockchain 
actually has a consensus mechanism where most of the people on the network have to agree for the block to be confirmed, right? And if Bob is a liar, well, the other people aren't going to be lying. And there's incentive for them not to lie. And the incentive for them is basically this. When you complete a block, what you have to do is you have to solve a puzzle, okay? And I'm going to talk about this puzzle in the next lecture when I'm talking about miners, because these people are actually going to be miners, uh, and they their responsibility is confirming that these blocks are correct. There's incentive for them to tell the truth. Why? Because they get paid a transaction fee that everybody here pays. There's a little transaction fee that goes to them. And because they have to solve a very complicated puzzle, it takes them time and energy and computational work to solve that puzzle. So they have no incentive to lie because if they lie about it and say, hey, you know what, this block is truthful. So let's say Bob is lying and says this block is truthful, but then these guys, they don't lie and they say the truth and they say, you know what, no, this, law, this block is not truthful. We found that this other block with these other transaction is truthful and there was no Bob transaction on it. And this is the truth. And let's say here, four people out of five say that this is the truth. So 80% of the people say that this block is truthful. Then this block will be rejected. And Bob lost money by, uh, you know, resolving this puzzle because you have to resolve a puzzle, do computational work, do all of this stuff because this block is going to be rejected and nothing on it will be accepted. And the blockchain is going to continue with this block. Now, I'm going to explain this in more detail in the next lecture when I talk about miners. But all of this to say is that the blockchain is basically going to attach the ledgers one after the other and make sure we have a chronological order. And they are correct by having miners do some work to make sure that they are correct and to prove that they are correct. Right. And to eliminate any bad actors from trying to uh, uh, falsify it. So even if Bob told all his friends, you guys come here and help me, and he brings in 20 of his friends, and he tells them, I want you all to lie and say that this is the correct block. Well, his friends are gonna have to solve this puzzle too. And to solve this puzzle, it's very consuming. It requires a lot of energy. So the only way you would be able to trick the system is if you had more than 51% of the hashing power or, you know, the computational power of the system, which we're going to see now in the next lecture about mining, why a true game theory, it would make no sense for anybody to game to the system and they would not even be able to game the system. So the blockchain really just adds the, the, the ledgers one after the other. So anybody can see where we're at at any time. It's public, it's decentralized, and everybody has access to the, the blockchain at any time. Now, this doesn't completely explain it. View the next lecture, and then we'll go to part two of the blockchain where we complete uh, this explanation. Thank you.